James, Paul, congratulations. You guys have made it to the third and final round of this competition. Now, when you came here, we threw a little twisted Damascus challenge at you. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate this iconic weapon from history. Ready to see it? Yeah. Sure. All right. That weapon is... The Darp Sri Gunchai. I have never seen anything like this. I can't even pronounce the name of this thing. Doob Sri Guntrabi, what did he say? Good luck, gentlemen. We'll see you in four days. Good luck, man. Good luck. Day one, I'm ready to get hammering. I'm gonna be using ADCR V2. It's a very good steel for impact and edge retention. And I believe the test that they're gonna be putting this blade through, it's gonna need a little bit of both. This is a big chunk of steel, so it's gonna take a minute to get the tip forged down to where I want it before I can start drawing it out to the length. The thing I'm struggling with the most is the weight of this entire blade. I'm having trouble keeping this thing straight when I take it out of the forge. It's in the day one. Pretty happy with the progress. Got it all drawn out, ready for a bath. Get started on this thing first thing in the morning. It's day one here at my shop in Fairfield, Connecticut, and I'm gonna be making the Darbushri Gunchai. For this challenge, I'm gonna be making ladder pattern Damascus, because it's really gonna set me apart from the competition. This is 15 and 20, that's the 1084. I gotta make sure there's no grease or oil on them, because that could affect the forge weld. After I get the steel cleaned up, I stack all the pieces up together and do my initial weld. I'm feeling really good that the welds have stuck. That's one of the most difficult parts of the entire process. The next step is to grind in notches all along the entire thing on both sides. And what that's going to do is expose the layers of the Damascus. It's the end of day one, and I'm in pretty good shape for the rest of the challenge. Pretty nervous today. We're going to do this heat treat this morning. I'm only halfway through with the time, so hopefully if something does happen, I've got time to make another one. Look at that. Four-leaf clover right at my feet. I hope it's a good sign. I didn't feel any pings or pops. I'm happy. It's the last day, and it's about time to start etching the blade. This is the most magical moment of making Damascus, because you get to finally see what the pattern's going to look like. I'm still getting streaks, though. I don't get it. It's just not at all what I wanted to see. There's a bunch of decarb all over the entire blade, which means I didn't grind deep enough, and the etch is not going to come out right. So I could either leave the decarb, and the Damascus won't be as good looking, or I could grind into the blade a little bit and risk making the blade too thin. I knew in order to save the pattern, I really had to just go back to the grinder. And I think it's pretty good. This is the Damascus I wanted to see. I'm still kind of concerned that the blade is a little on the thinner side, but there's nothing I can do now. Here comes the light from the end of the tunnel. So far, I've got the blade done. So I'm going to start working on a handle. I don't have long enough drill bits to drill all the way into that handle, so I'm going to have to carve out a channel for that tang to sit in and make sure the wood marries back together nicely. Yeah, baby. I made it a little of my own by adding some fur from the land around my house. I think that's going to add a little special touch. It is a little on the heavy side, but it's balanced perfectly. It's very wieldable. I'd say, yeah. All I can tell you is grab it by the rabbit. All right, Blade Spits, welcome to the kill test. Your dark street gun shies look intimidating, but are they deadly? To find that out, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing blows on this ballistic stomach. James, you're up first. You ready for this? There's nothing I can do to stop it. All right, let's do it. To say I'm nervous right now is an understatement. At this point, it's out of my hands. I just hope it can hold up. All right, James. First up, that's a beast. It's very forward heavy, so it definitely feels like a chopper all the way through. Now, your handle here. By adding this fur around it, I can't get a good grip on it because it's so soft. 
Now, your edge is sharp. Overall, sir, you'll kill. Thank you. All right, Paul, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I built my blade to be very light. It definitely makes me nervous seeing the ballistics dummy because I know there's a lot of hard bones in there, and I'm definitely a little bit worried that could bend, even break in half. You never know what's going to happen. All right, Paul, first up, I really appreciate the Damascus pattern that you brought out here. Now, the fact that I can hold the weapon out extended like this shows just how light this weapon is for its size. And because of that, I can cut deeply into this without using the weight, just velocity alone. But after that strike of the skull, it's picked up a little bit of a bend. Overall, sir, it'll kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I'll be chopping into these pots. Now, remember, this is not about what your blades do to the targets, but what the targets can do to your blades. James, you up first. You ready? Let it happen. OK. This is a shoulder-ripping monster. <laughs> Once you start this thing moving, stopping it is really rough on the shoulders. The fur around the middle here, it's a neat look, but it's very slick, actually. And then your edge is still sharp. You nailed it. Good job. Thank you. All right, Paul, you're up. You ready? Yep. OK. I see the pots, and I'm very worried. I feel like it could bend my blade even more than it already is. If something goes wrong, then I'm finished. All right, Paul, right off, this weapon has a feel that is excellent. I can literally use it with one hand. The edge, still sharp, nice and done. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, to see how sharp your weapons are, we'll try to cut through these pineapples. James, you're first. You ready for this? Let's go. Let's do this. All right, James, just a little off the top. Your edge is sharp, cuts cleanly all the way through these pineapples. It will cut. Thank you. All right, Paul, your turn. Ready? Yep. There you go, man. Gosh. All right, Paul. It is razor sharp. Just the thinness of your metal here cuts through no resistance. If you get the pineapple heads, they're all still standing right there. It's very sharp. And more importantly, it will cut. Thank you. James, Paul, you've both done an incredible amount of work. However, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion in this competition, and that champion is. Paul, congratulations. You're the new Forge and Fire champion. James, please surrender your gun chai. Well, I'm pretty happy we've made it this far. I don't think I could be too disappointed in what I've done, considering how the weapon performed. My blade was just a little too heavy. Congratulations. Great. You deserve it. Good job. It's been a really great experience. I did the best I could. No matter what you do in life, there's going to be challenges, and you're not going to always succeed. Just get back up, get back on the horse. Paul, oh, congratulations. You're the Forge and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I just couldn't be happier. This is like, got to be the craziest thing that's ever happened to me so far. I mean, I know I'm only 19, but I still can't believe it. I'm the Forge and Fire champion, and it feels incredible.